lovely students, welcome to Korean with Cherry. This is Cherry from Korea. Today, I have a very, very special guest. I will ask more than 10 questions about Hong Kong today. Hello everyone, my name is Scarlett Chu. I am an international student from Hong Kong. I'm currently a freshman at the University of Notre Dame in the US, double majoring in finance and economics with a minor in sociology. Online, you might know me as Something Scarlet. I have a YouTube channel where I post blog and study related content. Thank you for having me today. I'm working as a Korean language TA teaching assistant in Notre Dame. And one time Scarlett visited my class. Yes, it was so fun. I learned, okay, I didn't understand anything. I don't know <laughs> Korean. But it was so fun to just sit and listen and see all the other students learn Korean here in the US. Thank you so much. She she told me that she wanted to attend the class and she really came to the class yes i did i had yeah. free time so i i was like i want to go to cherry's class i want to see <laughs> so I came. did you find any similarities between korean language and the language that you speak so your first language is cantonese cantonese yes so people in hong kong we speak cantonese which is a dialect of chinese what, when people hear Chinese, it's usually Mandarin, which is the biggest Chinese, uh, or at least the biggest version of the Chinese language, and Cantonese is a dialect of it. We all use Chinese characters. Um, Mandarin uses simplified characters, and Cantonese uses traditional. So it has more strokes for characters. And the grammar conjugation and the way of speaking it is quite different. So my first language is Cantonese, even though I speak both Cantonese and Mandarin. And comparing Cantonese and Mandarin with Korean, um, because they're similar roots with the languages, I do think there are some similarities. For example, um, in Korean, I think exercise is undong. Right, and undong. Cantonese, it will be wandong. Oh. And Mandarin, it will be yundong. Yes. And for example, university, university student in Cantonese will be Dai Ho Sang and Mandarin will be Da Xue Shun. So you can see a little bit similarities. I think Cantonese and Korean are more similar than Chinese and Korean. Some words, yes. Um, for example, Hua Sang, Sa Zhong, um, Sigan? Yes. Sigan? And Cantonese, it will be Sigan. Oh, it's the same. Yes. Sigan. And this, Ligo? Ligo. Oh, yes. Really? Yeah. Uh, we can compare the sentence structure. In Korean, I say, 나는 노트북을 본다. 북한 电脑. We say, 나는 I, and then notebook, and then C. So yes. our structure is a little bit different. You say we still follow the English structure. Yeah. Like we see the computer. Right. And in Korean we say we computer see. Mm, it's that's different. different. We don't have strict honorifics. In Mandarin, if we want to say you with more um, respect, we don't say ni. We say ni. Ni. And I n. Um, that doesn't exist in Cantonese, even though oh. we don't say it usually. For example, you call boy will call an older male Hyung or a younger girl will call the older guy Oppa. We all say Gege or Gege. in Cantonese Gogo. And for female, it, it will be Nuna or Oni. And we would say Jie Jie mm. or in Cantonese Jie Jie. Ah. Oh. Mean we have in, in Mandarin Xue Jie, Xue Zhang. In Cantonese Si Jie, Si Heng. Yeah. I didn't know about that. You have the same concept of sunbenim, sunbenim, which is which doesn't exist in US, right? <laughs> mm, it's so hard to translate. When we try yeah. to translate Nuna or like an Opa or like Hyung and stuff, it, <laughs> it goes off. It comes off as older sister, older brother, older sister, and they, boy girls. And yes, and then it will be so so confusing for the Americans because they will never call like someone older than them like they're just sister yeah they just call their names it's just an honorific that is a sign of respect a sign of intimacy and yeah yeah a lot of intimacy so korean people when we get closer we say we call the honorifics not names so like 
if you're older than me, I would say, Onni, how yes, are you, Onni? Like this. I know some of the Korean <laughs> students here, they call each other Onni and like mm. Kyung and stuff. I, I notice it, it's very sweet, personally. It reminds, even though it's not my culture, I share the same sentiments of like wanting to call someone that, so I, I think it's very sweet. Can you call someone older than you, Jiejie? <laughs> yeah, we sometimes do that too. Yes. Oh. Is it rude to call older sister's name? Not so much. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Korean culture is more emphasized. Um, but in Chinese culture, it's sometimes you do it if you really want to. That's up to you. But I think you already know a lot of Korean words. You mentioned <laughs> 언니, 오빠, and 운동. Do you know any other Korean phrases or words? Did you learn Korean? How do you know those words? <laughs> Um, I follow a lot of K-pop mm. groups. I'm a big fan of K-pop, um, so I hear some Korean words and stuff. And here at Notre Dame, I have a lot of Korean friends who speak Korean, so I sometimes can guess what they're saying too. Oh. Yes. When we met for the first time, I remember that you said 안녕하세요. <laughs> <laughs> that was my me trying to say. <laughs> Uh, hi in Korean. I'm not sure if my accent is that great though. <laughs> no, you said 안녕하세요 and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I tried, I tried. Yeah. Do you like any K-pop groups? Who is your least bias? 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 I don't have a bias group, but I love listening to a lot of um, girl groups. I've been, I really like Stacey, oh. um, Mi Jeans, I love Seraphim. Um, my favorite boy groups are Stray Kids, TXT, and I really love to dance. And I got into K pop because of their choreography and their dances. I, and so right now here in Notre Dame, I'm part of the K pop dance club here called Ascend. Um, we recently filmed a dance cover for. Batter Up by Baby Master. Thanks. I was Ruka for it. And right now we're preparing a show for the Korean Student Association and Ascend, the K pop club, is performing a lot of different dances. We're doing Love Scenario by Icon, we're doing, and one by John Cook standing with you. I'm not too familiar with that, but I'm going to be dancing in Blackpink's Love Sick Girls, New Jeans ETA. It'll be <gasps> so fun. ETA, yeah. wow. Can oh, we're also doing Twice Heart Shaker. Oh, and kind of old song. Love Sick Girls and. Yeah, we do, a, we do new songs and old songs. Mm. So it'll be really fun. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wow. Yeah. Can you tell me how do you practice? How do you practice for the dances? Do you meet with other members every week? Um, we try every week, but usually we don't have the time since everyone is so busy here at college. Um, on my own, I like watching, ex I like watching the dance covers and learning it on my own. Sometimes if we have time, someone in the club would learn the dance and they would teach the other members. Ah, one person learns the choreography and then teaches other group, uh, other members. Yeah. That's how I learned ETA oh. and for Lovesick Girls, I just taught myself. You taught by yourself? Yeah. I think there are a lot of people who love to watch the choreography, but they cannot dance like dance. they do. It's really hard. <laughs> how do you memorize all the choreography? I danced for nine years in ballet. Uh, a ballet. Yes, yeah, so I have some dance background. Um, and then when I got to K-pop, I start dancing all other different types of genre like hip hop, studio, contemporary. I also did a little bit of tap dancing for a little bit. So I think my body is just more used to learning choreography and I can get it quite quickly. Mm. I love to dance. And I'm really happy that Notre Dame um, has um, so many Asian ethnicity groups and Asian culture clubs that I can join, such as the hip hop dance club. Mm. Once I watched the performance of um, Ascent. Really? Yeah. It was uh, Asian Award, the oh, event called Asian Award. Yes, I didn't dance in Asian Award, but I, I watched it. It was so good. I was very surprised because they're not Koreans, but they love K pop and they danced amazing. And yes, other people in the Ascent group, they are from everywhere in the States and every different countries. 
I'm part of it and I'm not from Korea, so it's very welcoming community here and I think it's very I love sharing different interests um, with the different students here as well. Thank you so much for your interest in Korean culture and K-pop. I'm so grateful. I was really worried about what people in US would think of me or would think of Korean. But I thought Korean culture was very welcomed yes. by many people, so I was yes. so happy. I think Korean culture has gained a lot of popularity and a lot more recognition in recent years with K-pop and K-drama, which is wonderful. And I'm so excited to see whether that also expands to different Asian countries as well, including Hong Kong. I also have some Hong Kong vlogs um, if you're interested in learning more about university life here in the States and life in Hong Kong. You can definitely go to my channel and check them out. Yeah, please subscribe to Scarlet <laughs> channel. Thank you. Thank you. As an Asian, I think we share a lot of similarities. Yes, we definitely do. I feel like Hong Kong and Korea, they both share a culture of respecting your elders, taking care of your family, but also working hard and focusing on your studies when you are a student. That's a big difference I sense here. You mentioned etiquette, um, respect for elders. Mm -hmm. So for example, are there some things that doesn't exist in the US? For example, mm. the bowing culture, like yes. when we see elders, we always mm. announce it. Oh, yes, I yes, say yes. that. Do you do that in Hong yes. too? I went to a local school back in Hong Kong before coming to the States where it was the local system. So we had basically what we call the Hong Kong DSE. I'm pretty sure it's similar to the Korean entrance college entrance exam as mm -hmm. well. And in that culture, we were taught to like bow to your teachers and say, like good afternoon teacher oh, mm -hmm. and all the time and also during classes we expect to stay quiet and raise our hands if we have questions and just um, respect the teacher and just basically absorb information but here in the states we are encouraged to ask questions we're yes. encouraged to engage in discussion based <laughs> classes where like the teacher would be like oh talk in small groups of two to three and discuss this question I at first I found it so interesting and different um and you're almost encouraged to make friends with your teachers there's office hours there's like you can eat with your teachers in a dining hall the u.s and american culture is very different in terms of that and i feel like it's emphasizing a different form of etiquette the u.s is encouraging collaboration and um communication of course there is respect but i feel like the Asian cultures in Korea and Hong Kong and pretty sure in most Asian cultures they are much more emphasized with like the hierarchy and stuff. I agree with you 100% mm -hmm. yes. like, I what I realized here was that in the States professors always ask our opinions yes yes like you said we make a circle and we have to talk and we have to I share know. our opinion it was so different at first and also uh, back in Hong Kong, um, in the local school, we would sit in the same classroom and then we would have a bell signal like the end of each class and the teacher will come in and come out and teach different subjects. So, but here we have to move around and we go to different places, different buildings for each class. And I remember my first time when the bell rang or like it was time to leave class at 12.30, everyone just started packing up. Even the teacher wasn't stop, hasn't stopped talking, but people were packing up and leaving already. I was so surprised because I was used to having to stand up and say, thank you and have a good day, teacher. But then we didn't do that, they just left. I was oh. so surprised. But yes, that's just very different culture. And are there any things that exist in the US but don't exist in Hong Kong? For me, the thing that People say bless you. Oh yes, when they, yes, yes. When they see, it. <laughs> yeah, when they see, it, they say bless you. We don't have it in Korea. We don't care. I feel like a big difference is small talk. Like when you meet someone mm -hmm. you don't really know that well, but you're expected to talk to them. You're expected yeah. to be like, oh, how are you? Oh my gosh, the weather is so nice. Mm. How have you been? Oh, how's your classes and stuff like that. Um, that doesn't. I don't think that really exists mm -hmm. in Asian culture. It was very, it was very interesting, because and I had to like teach myself how to engage in small talk oh. and stuff too. 
because you would just like pass people by and be like hi and you have to talk for like two sentences and then you're walking away that's something I had to train myself to do what surprised me was that they asked me how are you and then they don't listen to my answer they ask how are you and then they go I they know, leave I know. immediately I was so surprised then why, why do, do they ask? ask? <laughs> Are you really interested in how it was just, I am? It was Did you get used to saying the small talk? Yes. Doing the small talk? I, after, I've been here for a few years, so now mm. I'm used to it. Yeah. I still cannot initiate the small talk yet. It's, it takes practice. It takes practice. It takes time for me. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you how people think about your nationality. Because we're Asians, and I think people in US, they're really confused of our nationalities they don't know where we are from mm -hmm. and they get like um, <laughs> so are you from china or <laughs> i've actually gotten a few comments saying that i look korean sometimes which is so surprising to me i always introduce myself as in hi i'm sorry i'm from hong kong yeah. i sometimes heard that i look like chinese I don't know what they... Um... I don't think Americans or foreigners are very accurate when guessing our nationality mm. and it's a little difficult for them to ask sometimes because they think it might be rude but I think it's alright to ask and I'll just tell them my answer yeah. mm -hmm. I watched some videos that you filmed in Hong Kong and the desserts and the food look amazing Hong Kong food is so delicious! Yeah, it's so delicious! <laughs> So do you eat rice more than noodles or do you eat noodles more than rice in Hong Kong? I think we have a balance, but I think most people prefer rice. I think most Asian countries prefer rice. Yeah. Oh, and not bread. I like bread, but it's not so much a staple here. Mm, staple is rice. It's our commonality between Korea and Hong Kong. Yes, yeah, so a lot of a lot more vegetables, a lot of mm. um stews and a lot of soups. Yeah. Are there Hong Kong waffles? Waffles, egg waffles, yeah. In Russia and in Russian in Russian speaking countries, the Hong Kong waffles are really popular. Is it square? Is it yeah. circles? Yes. Yeah, circles. Oh, it's in in English. It's translated as egg waffles. Ah. Um, but in Cantonese, we pronounce it gai or Mandarin, it's pronounced ji dan zai. It directly translates to egg, like little eggs. So mm. the egg waffles looks like little eggs. Yeah. Then do you eat we have you? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. moon cake. Oh moon cakes. We eat it during mid-autumn festival. Ah mid-autumn festival. Yeah. Uh, and you eat dumplings on the new oh, year? Yes, you we eat dumplings during this. Um oh. then Lunar New Year's actually. Lunar New Year. Yeah, one more commonality between us. We celebrate Lunar New Year. Yes. Which was February 10th this year? Yes, it changes every year according yeah. to the lunar calendar. First year student, then you started to study. When did you start to study here? I started August of 2023. Ah. Um, and that was, and I'm expected to graduate in May of 2027. I'm currently a first year in a four year program here mm. for undergraduate studies. Do you like Northern so far? It is so perfect for me. I love mm. the campus culture here. I love how everything is so central and every such a strong Notre Dame community. Everyone is so supportive and has so much school spirit for Notre Dame. And all the Asians here are very nice to each other. And even the Americans and foreigners, they're also very accepting of us. So everyone here is just super supportive and there's a lot of amazing academic opportunities for you to do research, to explore pre-professional paths. I just think Notre Dame is very perfect. Mm -hmm. Isn't it hard to prepare for exams? It's midterm. It's midterm <laughs> season. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like that's give or take because you're learning about something you're really interested in. Um, you're taking classes that will help you in your future career. And I don't mind studying for these exams because I. They are stressful, but I'm interested, and I think it's an investment into your future in your studies. And as you mentioned, I agree that this university is really supportive. I was worried about how they would accept me as an Asian, but there were a lot of Asian professors in fact. Mm -hmm. I think Notre Dame is a good university. 
it's wonderful here. And I found you, like, um, <laughs> I found you on YouTube. I was searching for Nora Dame blogs, Nora Dame bloggers, because I wanted to make friends. And then you popped up, and you had a lot of views, subscribers, <laughs> and I was like, first time you're Asian. So I was like, oh, she's Asian. Let's let's watch her videos. And I was so curious where she's from. And you were like, I'm Scarlett. I'm from Hong Kong. And then. I realized that I'm international. Oh, you're an international student. So I'm so so excited when you reached out to me as well. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there are other YouTubers and like people in Notre Dame who are online as well. So it was so exciting when you reached oh. out. How did you start to film videos on YouTube? Wasn't it mm, difficult? How did you decide it? Many people dream of filming <laughs> videos on YouTube, but it's not easy. I started doing YouTube seriously um, last summer, so before I came to Notre Dame, the summer before I came to Notre Dame in around June. I started vlogging because I loved watching other people's vlogs and I think I can try my hand at it to see if it works out for me and I just really like filming videos and editing and making you know, my life look you know, pretty on camera and stuff. It is difficult in the sense that it takes a lot of time to edit my videos since my editing style is very detailed. Um, but I think it's really, it's really wonderful. It's really, doing YouTube has really given me so many opportunities that I am really thankful for, so yeah. I agree with that. YouTube gives you a lot of opportunities I do YouTube so we could meet each other. Yes, so I, that, met, yeah. I met Harry through YouTube. <laughs> like that's a, that's so fun. Yeah, YouTube can help you to make friends. <laughs> Isn't it difficult to film a vlog every time? When you take your phones and make a video, your friends don't care about it. They don't ask Oh, you. that's funny. <laughs> um, I try to vlog when I'm walking around campus when there's not a lot of people oh. um, because I don't want to invade their privacy. Um, when I'm with friends, I always ask, I always tell them I'm vlogging today um, just to let you know if you don't want to be on camera, just let, just tell me mm. and I'll stop filming. But my friends are all very supportive and they're always excited when they should get on camera, when they get on a YouTube video. So my friends are supportive and sometimes vlogging with friends makes it more fun as well because my vlogs can also be like uh, a digital diary to keep memories. Mm. So when I watch back, I'll think back to, oh yes, me and my friends did that, that night in the library. And yeah, it's just, I think it's a lot of great nice experience. It seems like you study a lot. Whenever I watch your video, you're always like studying in the library. <laughs> I think my vlogs are very realistic. I just vlog my mm. day to day life. And often that includes studying because as college students, we have so much work. Um, so I do think my videos are quite accurate representation of my life. That doesn't make it the standard, but yes, I probably do study a lot and stuff. It's great. Maybe the factor that your vlogs are really realistic, it makes a lot of people <laughs> watch your vlogs and no. Thank you. That's Thank why you. your videos are so good. I'm so flattered when you say you watch my videos. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. It was so fun. Thank you so much for um, coming to my YouTube channel. It was so honored oh, to be thank with you. Thank you for having me. It was so fun to talk to you yeah. today. I learned a lot about Hong Kong and I wish I could go to Hong Kong someday. Please visit one day. I would love to come to Korea. Oh. I really want to go. Welcome, to... welcome. When you come to Korea, you need K Ifta visa and you need someone's phone number. No. Yeah, touristic okay. visa. So if you need my help. I'll get <laughs> write down my number and my address. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chen, for having me. And thank you for watching today's video. Yeah, as well. thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope this video helped you to learn about the culture in Hong Kong and Korea. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and please like this video. And if you're interested in Hong Kong, if you're interested in international students' life in US, please reach out to our Scarlet. My channel name is Something Scarlet and it will be in the link in the description.